All right, so welcome to the Art of Mechanical Drafting, Part 3, Making First Drawing. And, of course, I'm Phil Kerner, the Tool and Die Guy. All of the lessons for this um, series will be based on this book uh, from my high school days, The Fundamentals of Engineering Drawing. Now, I've looked for this online. There's several different versions. I haven't found this one from, I believe, 1963. Uh, but uh, I have a feeling they're going to be basically the same, but I cannot guarantee that, okay? But they're named the exact same thing. And that's what it looks like inside. Uh, this book is just a treasure trove of learning how to draw. And again, this is where uh, my lessons came from all those years ago. So I'm glad I still have this book. As you can see, um, it's getting pretty tired. Uh, the binding is starting to fall off. It's basically being held together uh, just by sheer will, I believe, at this time. So let's take a look at that first lesson. I was able to scan in that page. And uh, we're going to start with this uh, one on the lower left. And then we're going to move over to this brick pattern. And it explains what we're trying to learn here on, on problem 211, uh, an exercise from the T-square, triangle, and scale. And it tells you kind of what to do. And then on problem 213, uh, street paving intersection, for uh, learning how to use your 45-degree triangle. So um, let's see if we look at the original. That's my original drawing from 1975. And um, back then, they had us do everything, uh, what I would call in the... Uh, the graphic arts world, everything was done in a portrait mode here, uh, meaning uh, everything was taller than it was wide. Well, that's not the way we usually work. I think they did that so we could uh, put holes in our drawings, which is a shame, uh, but they'd fit in your notebook. Uh, today, of course, we could just uh, use uh, page holders, plastic page holders, and wouldn't have to do that. Okay, so here's my first effort, and uh, when we're done with this uh, lesson today I'll critique my own work so uh, here it is that is the black version that's right off the drawing board um, then I for fun turned it into a blueprint using Photoshop now um, this was a little more tedious than I thought as you're gonna see in the video um, but there are some things to learn from this um, there are you're, you're learning to do now is draw lines and that sounds silly and it looks easy but it's you're gonna find out it's a little trickier than I remembered to be honest with you now before we get started on the live portion of the video I made a big mistake uh, one of my first two videos when I talked about pencils and let's take a look at these pencils here I said you could probably just use these artist pencils and I was very wrong and I'll tell you a couple things uh, they're so soft, they get dull very sharp, very easily. And when you're trying to do precision work, um, they get dull too fast. That's all there is to it. They're great for sketching, uh, hand sketching, but for this purpose, forget it. And see all these black smudges? I'm having a hard time even getting those off the board. That is from these pencils. And graphite smudges on your board are your enemy because they'll smudge your drawing and make a mess. They get on the bottom of your scales, and you just end up with a goopy mess. So do not, do not use those pencils. The next, uh, some, somebody suggested, you know, how about these mechanical pencils? You know, here's the problem. Um, the lead sticks out just a little bit. If you let stick it out too far at the bottom, it bends a little bit. So your lines won't quite match up because you get a little bit of a flex. If you only stick it out a little bit, you're constantly clicking the end to extend more lead. Eh, you know, I guess, I, if you've had experience with these and you know, know something I don't, that would be fine. But in the end, what I learned myself from my first lesson drawing it, was you really need to go back to this. There's a reason these lead holders and these leads were invented. Uh, they're super sharp. You can sharpen them you know, to a, a pinpoint. And also, uh, to the point you can get them so sharp, we used to keep a piece of paper next to our drafting machine so we could uh, dull it, just scrap, uh, just uh, scribe a few lines, sketch a few lines to just to knock that razor sharp tip off. But um, they're strong. These don't bend. So when you're trying to draw straight lines, it's very, very important that your, your lead is strong and it doesn't uh, flex. So that's how far I can stick that out and no flex whatsoever. So, you know, um, I shouldn't have tried to reinvent the wheel there. This is the real deal. There's a reason these were invented. I was able to find a bunch more of these on uh, eBay. And so I've got some more leads and lead holders coming because when you're on the top of your game, you need two or three or four of these with different grades of lead for different line types all right so I apologize for that so now that we're gonna go into me working on the board it's rather long and tedious I probably won't do this for every lesson but you can kind of see how I'm taping the drawing to the table and how I lay everything out with light lines that's the emphasis of this uh, first uh, actual doing your own drawing lesson okay so uh, let's take a look at that 
All right, so uh, here we are getting started. I'm actually watching this for the first time along with you. So what you can see I'm doing right now is I'm using the drafting tape, the 3M drafting tape, to uh, tape the four corners of the paper to the drafting board. All right, now, usually this, you'll see here, I, I just stop for a minute and tear all four pieces off and tack them to the scale a little faster instead of having to set it down and go back and forth. Things are coming back to me as we move along, okay? So uh, the trick is, you'll notice also, as uh, as I'm taping it down, stretching the paper out nice and tight. You don't want uh, your paper to be floppy or you know uh, not tight to the table, or your lines won't uh, always match up. So that's a good tip right there. Now I'm going to take my drafting pencil, uh, lead holder, whatever you want to call it, and I'm going to put a dot, a quarter inch in from each uh, side of the paper that way, and then vertically quarter inch up from the bottom and a dot a quarter inch from the top and then we'll lightly lay out the border this is another technique I never draw anything dark until I'm happy with the way everything looks okay so very light lines and then I'll go through as we move forward and um, darken those back up and the next thing I'm gonna do let's see here is draw a little title block four inches over I believe I came up uh, an inch and a quarter. You'll have to use your scale for this if you don't have this type of machine. You lay this out and then a nice light line. So this is my title block there. And now I'm going to split the paper in half. I'm going to divide the paper by two. That's a, a 11 inch wide. So I'm going to half, inch and a half over and then, uh, I'm sorry, 11. Five and a half inches over and on the um, vertical that's eight and a half so four and a quarter. And I'm going to draw two light lines to center up my drawing. Those are my layout guides. Because we want these two squares centered. And then I'm moving over three quarters of an inch each way, left and right. And that's where my squares will start. Again, nice and light layout lines. Now I'm coming down two inches from the center line that I had just sketched in vertically. Because my square is going to be four by four. Okay, now because I've drawn it nice and light, I can sit back and think for a second. Does this look right? All right. Now I'm drawing the end of the four-inch uh, block that way, and then I'll draw the end of the four-inch block on the left. You'll notice I just make a little mark, a center mark there, so I have something to follow. Now I'm going to start darkening in my lines. Now notice the technique. I don't draw one long line. I start at the top, go halfway down, and come at the bottom up. Left, to, to a little over that way, and then connect it that way. That's uh, for speed. Instead of trying to, to draw a long, slow line, just work from your ends towards the middle. And that's what this exercise is all about. Learning how to draw your first drawing and how to draw lines correctly. And you will see, as we move forward here, the uh, larger pattern on the left is much simpler <laughs> than the one on the right was. Okay, now I'm splitting my 4-inch uh, block in half, darkening that line. And then I'm dividing that top section into three sections, half inch apart. And we're going to draw a dark line. Now we're going to split the bottom section ver uh, horizontally so we can get the vertical sections in. So we're going to go right in the middle, two inches, it's a four inch circle, four inch square, I'm sorry, vertical line. Then every half an inch, another vertical line. And you can see with using a drafting machine, it's a little faster than having to put my scale up there each time. But this is taking long enough, for the sake of these lessons, what you're really learning from me here is how to um, draw these lines. I cannot express enough 
of the lessons I learned doing this for the first time in many, many years, how important the lead holder is versus a normal mechanical pencil or an artist's uh, number two or number three pencil. Uh, these are the way to go. They're much more, they're stronger and they're sharper. And what do I mean by stronger? It means my lead isn't uh, flexing and that becomes very apparent when you're using uh, a, like a thin, I'm checking these angles here, a thin lead on a mechanical pencil that if it can stick out just a little bit too much, they actually start to, to uh, bend from the pressure of your hand. So that's, there's a reason they invented this stuff, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, split this, um, this square on the right on a long 45 degree angle. And I will tell you, uh, we're about 60% uh, through the live portion of this. The video camera, the battery finally dies because I've been taping a lot of long uh, videos. But that's okay. You're going to get 90% of what you need to learn here uh, just by watching what I'm doing here now. This brick pattern is difficult. Uh, it took me a little while to get the cadence of how to lay this out right. And it all starts with the center. Now, what you're going to see me do... This stuff rolls off my table here. All right. I didn't like that corner. It didn't come out right. So uh, I'm going to take my racing shield, cover up the existing stuff, and just erase the section I didn't like. And uh, let's see if I go back in and tighten that up a little bit. And you'll see me refer back to that old yellow one several times. Now I'm going to start laying out the other 45 degree lines. I'm going to, I'm to uh, I'm counting the squares. And now I'm dividing this quadrant up by quarter inch increments. Just by putting a light dot there. And then I'm going to go to the other direction I believe here. And do the same thing. Every quarter inch a guide, a, just a dot. So when I start laying out my lines, I have something to follow. It's a time saver. You don't want to, um, you know, make a mark, draw a line, make a mark, draw a line. Make all your marks, then draw your lines. And you can see I'm counting this maze here. I don't know if it was too early in the morning yesterday, uh, but, uh, I knew I had already tried to draw this once, quite honestly, and messed up the pattern. And uh, I was quite far along with it when I realized I had done something wrong, so it didn't come out right. So this is a really, really painstaking exercise. And for those of you who want to learn how to, the, uh, how to draw correctly, again, um, do this exercise. You'll be a little surprised at how long it takes. And... Um, um, at the tediousness of laying all these quarter inch dots out to separate your quadrants of your brick pattern out. And uh, for the sake of um, understanding, just remember all those bricks, quote unquote bricks, are quarter inch by half inch. And like I said, it all starts with the first four bricks in the center. If you get that screwed up, um, your pattern's not going to work. So, again, back to, there's the drafting brush, as I told you. Uh, it's, a, it's a tool you must have. Sharpen the pencil again. And uh, this is imperative, again, if you learn anything from this, this first drawing lesson. Lay your stuff out light. Because once you lay it out too dark you got to erase stuff and you know and it's time very time consuming to uh lay things out uh wrong and then have to erase them so nice light lines are much easier to erase than deep dark ones so this is gonna uh, peter out in just a few seconds so you saw the technique you saw the finished drawing and then i'm going to finish up with critiquing that first drawing Okay, so as promised, I'm going to critique my own work. Now, uh, if we go back to my original, my original uh, drawing, 
from 1975. You can see a little red mark there, and uh, my lines didn't match up. There's a little loop there. Now, you, give it, you can't see it. it got cut off for some reason. I got a 90 on this. Uh, I think that was a little generous. But if we go back down to critiquing my work now in 2020, a couple things I don't like. You can see my original little dots here that I put on the paper to lay out my lines. There it is over here. I got to do better at that. They're too dark, I think, because I shouldn't have to erase those or do a better job of hitting that line when I draw my actual line, hitting my dot there so it would cover it. Number two, I could see, here's how picky this gets, all right? Um, this one here, I, I didn't quite connect this intersection. Um, this one here's got a little bit of a double line. They didn't quite match up. And this, uh, I didn't quite connect down here, all right? So, and if you look very closely at this one, I see I have a little space there. Um, uh, let's see, I did see an overextension in one area right there. This line went through that line too far. So little things like that, or what you got to get good at and uh, again uh, this is my first effort now so it, honestly if I was grading myself I'd probably give myself a B minus on this one I think it's better than a C but I'm gonna give it a B minus because I'm grading my own work so uh, we'll get started on lesson two on the next one I hope you enjoyed this one